Welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, and what better place to reflect the rising tide and popularity of our fabulous pastime than down here by the river. Coming up on this week's show, we have some friendly technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave, plus some cracking van and site reviews. So without any further delay, let's dive straight in. Well, not literally. I'm here at the Eldest Factory in County Durham to take a look at the company's new 2018 models. One of them is behind me. It's the Accordo 105, one of four models in the range, all of which are low profiles. For 2017, the changes to the range were fairly significant, including a move over to the Peugeot Boxer chassis cab. This year, they're far more subtle, with one exception. These blue walls, which you can see on the van behind me, were brought over from the Compass Caravan range last year. There was only one major change to layouts in the Accordo range for 2018, and that's inside the van behind me. It's a good excuse to go inside, so let's go and take a look. This may be a six metre motorhome, but there's no denying it feels really spacious. There's plenty of room for four or even six people to sit in comfort, and we really like the new upholstery colours. The carpet looks great, that's brand new, and there's also new fronts to the lockers, which look really smart. Up above the cab, there's also a really nice skylight, which lets in plenty of illumination. Speaking of lockers, there are four up above and they're really good size with positive catches to make sure they stay shut in transit. There are also two great size areas underneath the sofas which you can use to store all sorts of bits and bobs. They're easy to access as well thanks to two flaps at the front that just simply fold down. There's also some great storage up above the cab area too perfect for storing guidebooks or maps. The two sofas aren't long enough to be used as single beds, but it's really easy to make up a good sized, comfortable double bed. All you have to do is pull out the slats, fold down the cushions, and there you have it. If you enjoy cooking, you'll find everything you need here in the 105. There's loads of work surface for chopping and preparing, and storage is fantastic. There are two sets of lockers up the top, a further locker down below the oven, and another to the right of the oven all of which offer loads of space for storing pots and pans and dried goods. Washing up is taken care of with a deep sink and cooking is taken care of with a three burner hob. There's also a generously sized Dometic fridge and a Thetford oven and grill. Just above the work surface is a pair of plugs, ideal for charging a laptop maybe if you're sitting in the lounge or just simply plugging in a kettle. Over by the door is another plug, along with an aerial socket where you can plug in your TV, which can be situated on this bracket. To the left of the door is this really useful storage unit featuring two drawers and a little locker. Just behind it is this massive wardrobe, which is full length and perfect for hanging the clothes of a couple. The big layout change for the Accordo range this year is in the 105's washroom. Last year it was a combined toilet and shower wet room, but this year it features a separate shower cubicle. Compact motorhomes such as this are sometimes let down by their washrooms, which often feel small and cramped in use. Not so in the Aldis, however. There's a great size shower cubicle now with a proper door. It's really practical even if you're staying on sites with not much in the way of facilities. The wash basin is of a decent depth and looks really modern. There's great storage here too, as there is in the rest of the motorhome. The area can feel a little bit dark. There's only a small roof light up top, but the artificial lighting is really attractive. The domestic style light pool is a nice touch too. The changes for 2018 to the 105 may be relatively minor. They also include a brand new accommodation door and, although they're not fitted here, alloy wheels as an option, they've taken a tried and tested layout and made it even better. This is a comfortable, practical, great looking motorhome. What's not to love? Hello and welcome to Diamond Dave's workshop. Today I'm going to be talking about the true Macombi and earlier C-series controls. Simply because we get asked a lot about these, it seems to confuse some people how they work. It's really quite simple. We have two controls, the energy selector and the mode selector. The energy selector does exactly what it says. It selects which energy source your heater is going to be using. We can have one bar electric, which is 900 watts or the full two bars, which is 1800 watts. And bear in mind that if you're running on electric, it's only 1800 watts at best. It's not gonna produce lots of heat. You may have a six kilowatt heater, but it's only 1800 watts of electricity. Gas, gas and one bar electric, gas and two bar electric. So if you've got a six kilowatt heater, if it's six kilowatts on gas and you're on 
two bar electric, you've got 7.8 kilowatts of heat energy to come out of it. So it'll get pretty hot pretty quick. If you come back to your motorhome on a cold winter's day and the van's very cold, stick it on electric and gas, get the van up to temperature, and then you can turn it back to electric only and use the electric just to maintain the heat temperature. The mode dial selects what type of heating you're going to be using. Now, Truma described them as summer and winter modes. You've got two of each. The upper two are summer modes. In summer mode, the heater only produces hot water. It doesn't produce any heat for in the van, any room heat. You've got two settings, water at 40 degrees and water at 60 degrees. Centre position is off. In summer mode, the centre dial will do nothing. Makes no difference whatsoever. The bottom two settings are what's called winter mode. That does room heating and water heating. So the first click down gives us room heating and water heating with the heater is mostly controlled by the room temperature set on this dial. Most people would find a setting of around about four to five to be a comfortable room temperature, but it will depend on the motorhome. It depends on where the temperature sensor is in the motorhome. You'll have to find out for yourself what is the best setting for you. The second click down is room heating and water heating with the water limited to 60 degrees. So it will now concentrate most of the energy into the water until the water heats to 60 degrees, then it will divert more of the power into the room heating. So if you're gonna have a shower, you want to get the water hot, you put it on the second click down when you've got 60 degrees of water. There's an orange light that comes on in here. That'll t when that goes out, the water is up to temperature and you can have your shower. And then you can click it back to the first click, which is room heating and temperature control on this dial, and then it will control the room temperature for you. Another thing that can cause confusion with these is the symbols on them. On the mode selector, we have vertical wavy lines to indicate electricity. On the mode selector, we have horizontal wavy lines to indicate water. If you get the two confused, obviously you're gonna get in a pickle with it. Another thing, if you're not on hookup, there's no point with that being set to electricity because if you haven't got a hookup cable plugged in, it's not gonna work. You'll have a fault and then you'll be wondering what's wrong with your heater. There's nothing wrong with it. You just forgot to plug in the hookup lead or you forgot to select gas on there. If you're on gas, obviously your gas bottle needs to be turned on. Seems an obvious thing to say, but it has been known. So fairly straightforward really, but it does cause confusion. Just if in doubt, read the manual. Hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time. The Matrix range, one of which you can see here, is in its eighth year of production and continues into 2018 with four models across three trim specifications. Adria describes it as a crossover range, somewhere between a low profile, an overcab coach built and an A-class. As you can see from the sweeping aerodynamic lines above the windscreen, it's much closer to the former than either of the latter two. What's more, it's a pretty flexible beast too. You can specify it on either the Fiat or Citroen base vehicle, this particular model is on the Fiat Ducato, and have either Truma or Aldi heating, depending on which specification line you choose to go for. So let's take a look at this. It's a fixed bed model at the very top of the range. The Matrix has received an interior refresh for 2018, and I think it looks fantastic and modern. The furniture is in symphony white, which tones really well with this cream leather upholstery. However, you might find that the table and the overhead lockers, which have positive catches to open them, are prone to picking up sticky finger marks. The lounge area will seat five people in comfort, and what's more, you can all dine here easily too, thanks to the large table, which can be moved backwards and forwards to reach each occupant. If you fancy just sitting back and relaxing, it's easy to do that as well, helped in part by the massive skylight which you'll find up above me. It allows plenty of illumination into the cab area, and if that's not enough for you, you can always touch one of these lights. Check these out. Still in the front, this side seat converts into a forward-facing fifth belted seat, pleasingly matching the number of berths. The kitchen is located in the centre of the van, with the main work surface 
over here on the near side. There's not a huge amount of work surface to use, but you can always drop down the top of the three burner hob and use that as a bit of extra preparation space. Elsewhere, it's pretty well equipped, including a Thetford combined oven and grill, a reasonably deep sink with an attractive tap and a good amount of storage. Turn around and you're faced with this huge Thetford fridge. What's more, there's an enormous freezer compartment up above too, perfect for storing your ice, ready for your G&T of an evening. Control panels have come a long way over the past few years, and this is a particularly modern example. Everything you need is in one easy place, and it looks great too. Alongside is the control panel for the Aldi heating system, which you'll get if you go for the top of the range Supreme model. Step into the centre of the motorhome and you'll find the washroom, which is split across both sides of the corridor. Down the bottom, there's a bit of space taken up by the wheel arch, but in general, it's a pretty good size. I also like the inclusion of the Aldi radiator, which will keep the area nice and warm in the winter. There's a roof light up top as well, so it's nice bright space. Opposite is the usual fare that you'd expect to find in a washroom, a Thetford electric flush swivel toilet and plenty of storage. The basin is not the biggest example we've ever seen, but it looks pretty smart and it should be perfectly big enough for your ablutions in the morning. There is an absolute wealth of storage available in this motorhome, not least in the rear bedroom area. Beneath both of these beds is a huge amount of space where you can store your bits and bobs. One thing I do love is this pair of doors. They open out wide, swing back into place, and you have a huge storage area for fishing rods, skis, or anything else that takes your fancy. And that's not all. You can keep your valuables safely hidden out of sight in this cubby hole in the floor or in this little unit under the step. Storage is all very well, of course, but bedrooms are for comfort and this one certainly offers comfort in spades. You won't be able to sit up and read in bed because of these three lockers overhead, but it does mean that there's a good amount of storage up top as well as underneath the beds. I also really like these shelves up here, which are perfect for storing a glass of water or perhaps your own glasses. You can have the bed just as you can see it here, or you can pull out this unit, add in a cushion and create a double. So there are two great berths at the back of the motorhome, but that's not the only sleeping option available to you. In the lounge, you have a bed that can be made up from the sofas. It's pretty much just an occasional bed though, because the star of the show drops down from the ceiling above. And that's all there is to it. Adria is so confident in its complex build construction of this model that this year it's offering a 10 year water ingress warranty. That's not the only fact you need to know. You also need to know that it rides on a three and a half ton Fiat Ducato chassis and that it costs £65,925. It might sound like a lot of money, it is a lot of money, but what that will get you is a motorhome that should serve you well both now and for many years in the future. There can be very few campsites in the UK with an entrance quite as impressive as South Litchit Manor Caravan and Camping Park. And that's just one of the many reasons why it won the coveted award of overall winner in the Practical Caravan and Practical Motorhome Top 100 Sites Guide. Well, we like it because of its situation uh, near Poole and Wareham and Swanage and the fact that um, it's a big site, it's level for motor caravans like we've got and um, the people are so very, very friendly and accommodating. We always get a warm welcome. It's a clean and well-kept site and it's in a good location for Poole and Dorset and the bonus is that you don't have to use your car every time with the bus at the end of the road. Very much a family business, the park is owned and run by the Bridgens with Mum Jo and Dad Dave at the helm and son Matt ably assisting, along with Phil and Debbie for backup. Customer service here to us is exceeding people's expectation. So when they turn up to our park, they would expect a normal arrival. We go out of our way to make sure all their requirements are adhered to. We take them to the pitch, we show them where the local pubs are, uh, give them all the information about the local area. Um, we'll take them down to make sure they're pitching the right correct, show them where the facilities are, the Elson Waste, the Great Waste and etc. The park has 150 well-kept pitches, with 110 of them being hard standing. 
and the majority of those fully serviced, which means electricity, grey waste, fresh water and a TV hookup point are all on tap, as well as a picnic bench. And the few that aren't fully serviced have all of the above minus the grey waste. But be aware that not all of the stands have picnic benches. Young families are well catered for with a brand new play area with soft fall mats, which is proving a hit with youngsters. <laughs> Plus, there's a small inside game room and also bike hire available on site. Well, we have a two and a half acre uh, secure off the lead dog walking area, which is very, very important to most of our guests. Um, you'll find that quite a lot of caravaners and motor owners nowadays do bring their little pooches with them and cats as well at times. We've seen that. Um, so it is important they can exercise the dog off the lead and let them go. Within there, there's obviously the usual bin and bags for everyone to use. Um, the pub in the village is dog friendly. The courtyard cafeteria just off our park as well is also dog friendly. We have bus stops at our gates. Um, it's a regular service either into Poole at Bournemouth or Swanage and also onto Weymouth, which obviously the buzzies are dog friendly too. Now, you don't get to be voted Campsite of the Year without spotless loos, and we can confirm that the three amenities blocks at South Litchit Manor are first class, with all being heated and with hair dryers and flowers in each. And there's a family bathroom, albeit with no bath, but there is a shower. Plus there's a laundrette for an extra charge and a food preparation facility, along with a well-stocked shop that offers fresh croissants and local meat in high season. For motorhome owners, there's a drive over grey waste disposal point and discreet l sand points around the park. And for those without a motorhome or caravan, you can even rent these Romany-style caravans. So, if you're after a five-star site to stay at in Dorset, we can think of no better. And if you don't believe us, just ask the readers of Practical Caravan and Practical Motorhome, who voted it their number one. We wish we'd have found it years ago. This is our fourth year here at Litchit and um, we just can't wait to get back. Um, it's absolutely, everybody's so friendly. All the staff and the bend over backwards to help you, you know, just so, so uh, good. And, uh, it's a pleasure to get down here, just to relax and uh, have fun. And as you say, there's everything, even for the bad weather. Um, we like to, like to go out into the New Forest. Um, we also like to go to Studland, and you particularly like to go to Bovington, to the Tank Museum. Bovington, Tank Museum, and Swanage for the Steam Railway. <laughs> and if you're down here with grandchildren, of course, there's um, Monkey World. Bus stops um, outside when you haven't got any <coughs> cars or uh, uh, bikes. Yes. The, the hire bikes here, so you, you can have a bike and, yeah. and they, they show you what routes to go on. It, it's excellent. There's lots going on, even the beach when the sun's shining. <laughs> Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's show, but we'll be back soon with some more cracking van and site reviews, plus friendly technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us via our website, Facebook or Twitter. Until next time then, tour safe and take care.